The Lord of the Rings, Gollum, developed by the Dalek Entertainment, released to substantial criticism in May, spotlighting several internal and developmental challenges, according to an investigative report from German outlet Game 2. The report, based on interactions with 32 past and present employees and statements from the Dalek, outlined issues stemming from the developers' roots in point-and-click games and struggles adapting to 3D action of a AAA scale. Despite a 15 million euros development budget, the studio faced financial constraints, hiring limitations, and internal pressures, with allegations of an unhealthy work environment, including unwarranted outbursts from leadership and unpaid crunch periods. Further, junior staff and interns purportedly faced excessive pressures. Marketing misaligned with internal realities as the game was promoted as a AAA title, while teams internally managed damage limitation amidst expanding game scope and constrained resources. Post-release, 25 employees were laid off, and Dedalic pivoted away from development towards publishing and distribution, even canceling another The Lord of the Rings project, codenamed Its Magic. Dedalic has refuted the allegations of an unhealthy work atmosphere. The latest release in EA Football Series, EA Sports FC 24, has garnered 11.3 million players within its initial week, indicating robust performance despite parting ways with the FIFA license. This number surpasses its predecessor, FIFA 23, which drew 10.3 million players in the comparable time frame last year and was lauded as a record-breaking launch. EA emphasizes that the recent figures encompass EA Play subscribers, implying that they may not directly translate to sales. Moreover, EA Sports FC 24 saw a 20% annual increase in new players, and its mobile counterpart, EA Sports FC Mobile, also experienced a strong debut with 11.2 million downloads in its first 10 days. The developer behind RuneScape, Jagex, will discontinue its controversial Hero Pass feature after its first season concludes in December. Introduced as an always-on-reward system last month, the Hero Pass faced significant backlash for perceived pay-to-win elements, leading Jagex to quickly amend the update post-launch. The decision to terminate the Hero Pass came after a player survey highlighted concerns about pay-to-win aspects and the game's future direction regarding such elements. Despite admitting the Hero Pass was a mistake, Jagex will allow it to run its course for those who invested resources into it. The company expressed a commitment to include players in early development stages for future features and aims to eliminate paid advantages in any forthcoming reward systems. The move has been received positively by the RuneScape community. Unity's CEO John Riquitello has opted for immediate retirement from his manifold roles at the game engine company amidst controversy and dissatisfaction from the gaming developer community. His departure follows a turbulent period marked by unpopular pricing changes and considerable layoffs within the company. James M. Whitehurst, ex-CEO of Red Hat and a former president at IBM, will serve as interim CEO. Despite being seen as a contentious figure due to his history of notable industry controversies, Riccatello's departure is not anticipated to alter Unity's financial expectations for Q3 2023. The company's future direction and whether it will shift its recently implemented policies remains to be seen. Dredge, an indie game developed by Black Salt Games, has remarkably sold 1 million copies since its release on March 30th, vastly outperforming the initial sales goal of 100,000 copies within the first year, a milestone it achieved within the initial 24 hours of launch. This success is particularly notable given it is a single-player game from a debut developer and is not available on subscription services like Game Pass or PS Plus. Despite its blend of eerie narrative and serene fishing simulation gameplay receiving multiple awards and nominations, the team encountered challenges, such as the delay of its first story DLC, The Iron Ring, and the publisher Team 17 undergoing unexpected redundancies. Ubisoft has announced another delay for its forthcoming free-to-play shooter, X Defiant, attributing the decision to inconsistencies in the game experience that emerged during a public test session on September 28. The game, which previously had a tentative release window of summer and then a likely October launch, now has no specified release date. Ubisoft, aiming to address the discovered issues, has not provided an updated launch time frame but promises to disseminate more information about the preseason and further testing in the future. Executive producer Mark Rubin highlighted frame spikes affecting movement as a notable issue identified through feedback during the testing session. 
D3 publisher has revealed that Earth Defense Force 6 will be released in the West in spring 2024, following its initial launch in Japan in August 2022. The game, set two years after its predecessor and amid ongoing conflicts between humans and alien invaders, the Primers, will be available on PlayStation and PC, offering players a choice among various classes, including Air Raider and Wing Diver. The game promises hundreds of missions and new weapons and abilities, with options for two-player local and four-player online co-op play. The franchise, which recently marked its 20th anniversary, has sold 5 million units across its history, featuring on numerous gaming platforms. The game is set to launch on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and PC via Steam, with a subsequent release planned for the Epic Games Store. The Microsoft has officially acquired Activision Blizzard in a $68.7 billion deal, navigating through 20 months of regulatory challenges in both the UK and US. The acquisition makes Microsoft one of the largest gaming companies by revenue, only surpassed by Tencent and Sony. The deal, which is Microsoft's largest to date, will see the addition of numerous game studios from Activision Blizzard and its subsidiaries to Xbox Game Studios, as well as the introduction of various Activision Blizzard titles to the Xbox Game Pass in the future. Bobby Kotick, CEO of Activision Blizzard, will assist in the transition through the end of 2023. The acquisition process witnessed legal and regulatory battles, including a lawsuit from the Federal Trade Commission and negotiations with the UK's Competition and Markets Authority, primarily over cloud gaming rights, before reaching a resolution. Yoshimi Yasuda, the founder of Dragami Games and former CEO of Kadokawa Games, announced a shift in design for Lollipop Chain Sori Pop, moving from a remake to a remaster in response to player requests. Without specific details, the implications of this shift are unclear, though it suggests a closer adherence to the original game's design. Previous announcements, such as a new soundtrack, a more realistic art design, and the absence of original creative director Suda51 and co-writer James Gunn, had caused concern among fans. Yasuda reassured fans that, despite an inability to include 16 licensed songs from the original, the team aims to stay as true to the initial release as possible, with no changes to the story and no desires to alter main character Juliet's design. He also highlighted intentions to negotiate with platform holders to keep the game as close to its original version, dismissing early worries about potential censorship. The final name for the game was revealed in August, and its release has been postponed to 2024. NetherRealm Studios has announced a November 2023 release window and unveiled the initial gameplay trailer for Omni-Man, a character from Invincible, for Mortal Kombat 1 at New York Comic Con 2023. Omni-Man, depicted ruthlessly in the trailer with moves derived directly from the Prime Video series, will be the inaugural playable character in Combat Pack 1. He will be available individually or as part of the Mortal Kombat 1 Premium Edition. The creators shared during Skybound's 20th anniversary panel that every aspect of Omni-Man's implementation into the game is inspired by the show. Remedy has announced that its forthcoming title, Alan Wake 2, will feature additional content post-launch, including both free and paid downloadable content. The sequel, which evolves into more of a survival horror game compared to its predecessor, will intertwine gameplay involving FBI agent Saga Anderson and the original game's protagonist, Alan Wake. The free DLC is described as pretty significant by the creative director Sam Lake, although specific details will only be revealed shortly after the game's release. Notably, Alan Wake 2 will offer a blend of various elements from Remedy's previous successful titles, presenting a hybrid gaming experience for the players. The game will launch on October 27. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Until next time.